Hey, come over here. I got a joke for you. What do you call alpacas that are taking over the world? <laughs> the alpacalypse. <laughs> what do you call an alpaca that has a carrot in each ear? Anything you want. He can't hear you. <laughs> and what do you call it when alpacas sing without any musical accompaniment? Alpaca Pella. <laughs> I got a million of them. But you know what isn't a joke? Living off grid. Once you decide to go off grid, you'll be asking yourself, why didn't I decide to do this sooner? Let me ask you some questions. Are you finally ready to put an end to all those ever increasing electrical bills? Do you want to laugh and laugh the next time the power grid grows down? Because you know it will. Or do you want to build a cottage or a cabin somewhere out, way out in the middle of nowhere, way off the grid? Or do you just want to take more control over your life and add another aspect where you are self-sufficient and no longer reliant on others? Well, if you said yes to any of these, then you definitely want to go off grid. Now, you've probably tried decreasing your electrical costs in the past. You've bought all the expensive light bulbs, and you've turned off the appliances when they're not in use. But you know what? That never seems to work, and your power bills keep going up and up and up. So stick with me, and I'm going to show you how you can fire your electrical supplier, go off-grid, be completely self-sufficient, and live a perfectly normal lifestyle. My name is Mike Caldwell and 13 years ago I found myself as the proud owner of an abandoned 6,000 square foot sawmill on 164 acres of hilly wooded terrain in the heart of the Gatineau Hills of Quebec. It was winter in Canada and this building only had three walls and a roof. But since I had to sell my house and my cottage to buy this place, it was now my one and only home. Looking back now, I don't know what I was thinking or how I allowed all of that to happen. Almost overnight, I had gone from a normal guy with a cute little house and a stable job to a rogue entrepreneur living in a three-walled sawmill way off the grid. Compared to this place, you'd say the Unabomber lived in the suburbs somewhere. Now, I'd spent all of my savings to purchase this property, but at first, I wasn't overly concerned. I had, a great, I had great credit, and I assumed I'd simply get a construction loan and get to work building. And because I had never built anything even as big as a garden shed before, I was completely naive to how over-the-top difficult my upcoming task was going to be. My first mistake was not understanding the requirements of a construction loan. After purchasing the property, I learned a construction loan starts with an architect and a blueprint. It does not start with an unins uninspected, unplanned, partially constructed sawmill. And I quickly learned that a low interest loan from the bank would not be forthcoming. My second mistake was underestimating the cost of bringing power to the house. Hydro-Quebec quoted me $45,000. They wanted all of that money up front, and then they were going to charge me monthly fees for that power use. So you can probably imagine I started to freak out just a little bit. I had invested literally everything I had into this nightmare. I had traded my house and my cottage. I had invested every dime of my savings. At the time, I was working part-time as a paramedic, and with no home phone or cell phone service here, there was no way for my job to notify me of any upcoming shifts. So I was basically out of, out of work as well. And then there's my girlfriend. There she was, dating this completely normal guy, me, with a great job, a nice house, and lots of disposable income. Now she was dating some crazed recluse who lived in a barn and had what appeared to be an insurmountable dream. So yeah, if I couldn't make this work, I would literally lose everything. But here's the thing. I didn't end up in this nightmare by misfortune. I got here because I had a dream. I didn't want to live in a city anymore. I didn't want somebody else telling me what hours I had to work. And I didn't want to work nights anymore. That's one of the drawbacks of being a firefighter and a paramedic. I wanted to live in the woods and be closer to nature. I wanted to work my own hours doing something I was passionate about. I wanted to create a wilderness oasis for myself and my family. I know each of us have our own dreams, and I wonder how many of you can relate to this one. 
but you can't build and live in a 6,000 square foot home in the woods without power tools and lights. So my first problem was where and how to get power. I clearly didn't have the money to pay Hydro-Quebec, Hydro but I had an epiphany. I don't need them. I would make my own power and I started to do my research on solar powered homes. But 13 years ago, there were very few people in Canada living off the grid and making their own power. You see, it's dark and winter here for almost half the year. So there were no government programs. Sure, there were retailers in California, but when I called them and told them what I wanted to do, they said I was crazy. Solar power in Canada just didn't make any sense. And apparently, although it may be possible, it just wasn't feasible. One day, though, I was talking to a guy who knew a guy, and that guy was a wholesaler for solar-powered products. Now, he had never actually used any of his products, but he heard my story, he felt sorry for me, and he agreed to help me out. Let's call this guy Mark. Now, Mark was a super nice guy, but he knew nothing about living off the grid. You see, one of the biggest problems for off-grid livers is how to bring water into the house. Water is heavy and it takes a lot of energy to move. This means that well pumps use a lot of power and if you don't have a lot of money to invest in a big solar power system, you may not have enough power to get the water out of the ground. So Mark recommended I use a DC, direct current, well pump. These cost twice as much as AC well pumps but they only use about 25% of the power. Now, even though it may cost more, a DC pump like this would actually save me money in the end because it means I could get away with a smaller system overall. Now, there was a pretty big learning curve and there was a lot of work involved, but I was finally able to get the DC well pump into the ground and working and the hot water heater installed and creating hot water. Now, you wouldn't believe how happy I was after close to three years of cold sponge baths and showering at a friend's houses to finally have a hot shower in my own home. And there I was that first time in my shower, all lathered up with soap, actually feeling warm and wet at the same time. Now, the shower pressure may not have been the best, but I was loving it and relishing every moment. But then, out of the blue, the water just stopped. The tap was still on, but no water was coming out. And there I was, butt naked and covered in soap and shampoo. So I got out of the shower, I toweled off, and I went to see what happened. Monique was in the kitchen, and she said she had just tried to pour herself a glass of water. A bit of water came out of the faucet, and then, just like the shower, the water stopped. Now, it actually took me a couple of weeks to get to the root of the problem. You see, the pump still worked, all my plumbing was fine, and there were no problems with the power to the pump. I called Mark and explained the problem, but nothing made any sense to him either. What I finally figured out, though, through my own research and a lot of trial and error, was that at the depth of my pump in the well, it could produce 1.6 gallons of water per minute. All right, And my high-efficiency shower head actually used 2.4 gallons of water per minute. So the high-efficiency shower head actually used almost a gallon of water more than the pump was producing. So, once my holding tank ran out of water, I was pumping water straight from the well and into my shower. And when Monique opened the other tap, some sort of vacuum was lost and that caused everything just to stop. So, once I figured this out, I called Mark and explained the problem to him. His first solution was to create some sort of holding tank in the attic and we could just slowly pump the water up there and then use gravity to feed the rest of the house. But Monique had long hair and needed more water pressure than a gravity-fed system could provide. Plus, it gets cold here in the winter. It gets really cold here in the winter. And since we're off-grid, there's no way to heat the attic and stop all that water from freezing. Mark tried to come up with a couple of other solutions, but none of them made sense either. And I explained those solutions in the off-grid realities and practices course. But there had to be a solution. So I started calling plumbers and well companies, but I swear there was some sort of conspiracy. Nobody wanted me to have a, sh a hot shower again in my home. Until one day, I called a different pump company, and somehow that guy was out of the loop and he wasn't in the plot against me. He just matter-of-factly suggested that I use a soft start deep well pump. 
Since it's, a, since it's a soft start pump, it doesn't start with the same energy hammer. And when it's running, it only uses about half the power that my inverter, inverter is capable of, of delivering. So that all means that it would work perfect. Of course, because this was an AC pump and my old pump was DC, I also needed to purchase hundreds of feet of new wiring and tubing in addition to the pump. But I finally got everything reinstalled and I had all the water and the pressure I would ever want in the shower. But what I didn't have now was heat. <laughs> my next problem was my on-demand propane hot water heater. All the problems I had with the well pump were perfectly paralleled with my hot water system. Once again, it seemed everyone was against me. Apparently what I wanted to do was impossible. But then one day I was speaking with Doug and he said, quite nonchalantly, why don't you just do this? And sure enough, his solution was easy and affordable. And today Monique and I can linger in the heat of our walk-in European shower until our hearts are content. But even today, these are the roadblocks you face when you're attempting to install an off-the-grid system. Retailers and appliances and heat and water and cooling, they only know how their stuff works in the on-grid world. And they have no desire to think outside the box and create a solution for you in your off-grid world. So it's not your fault when you don't know the solution or even the right question to ask. The fault lies with a lazy world, with the people who think the norm is the only way of doing things. Because trust me, those examples of the water pressure and hot water weren't the only problems I faced. I was met with roadblocks at nearly every turn. Regardless of how big or small my problem was, every person to, to whom I turned for advice, they all said I was crazy. What I was trying to do couldn't be done. But what I learned was the answer was always out there. I just had to stay determined and keep looking until I finally found the right resource. And you know what? With the exception of a cool little off-grid hacks I came up with, the majority of what I did really wasn't all that special or unique. But for some reason, every one of those simple fixes took me days or weeks or even months longer than they should have. And that's why I created my Realities and Practices of Off-Grid Living course. I figured if I shared with you all my trials and trepidations, I could make your path to success so much easier. You've heard a couple of my stories now, and I think you understand the pain and frustration I went through finding solutions for getting hot water with pressure into my shower. But I didn't tell you the story of how and why I had to return a 2,000 pound battery pack to the supplier 400 miles away. Do you have any idea how hard that is to do? Trust me, you don't just throw those batteries into the trunk of your Honda Civic. Here's the thing. The mistakes I made and the search for solutions weren't only frustrating, but they were expensive as well. Keep in mind, I had to buy two well pumps, two sets of wiring, and two sets of tubing to get water into the house. And to make it hot, I ended up having to go through three hot water heaters and I had to pay, pay a plumber each time to install them. And I'm sure you know that transporting 2,000 pounds of hazardous, hazardous materials, batteries, 400 miles is no cheap endeavor either. Trust me, these mistakes and the others are not mistakes you want to have to make yourselves. After taking the realities and practices of Off the Grid Living course, you will not only learn what I did, but you'll understand what you need to do when it comes to getting hot water into your shower so you don't have to wash with baby wipes for months, and you won't waste money purchasing the wrong equipment along the way. Similarly, you'll understand the best way to heat your house so you don't need to put on your coat every time you go to the bathroom. <laughs> and I've been there too. You'll understand when and how to generate power on cloudy days so you won't need to spend thousands of dollars on fuel for your generator. You'll know exactly what size inverter, solar array, and battery bank to install so you won't waste money purchasing more or less power than you actually need. You'll also know enough about every aspect of off-the-grid living so you won't allow your local solar power retailer to take advantage of you. Basically, this course is designed to teach you everything you need to know about living off the grid. This will not only save you countless hours of frustration, but potentially thousands of dollars as well.
When I taught this course at the college, the college charged the students for the course, and then they paid me a standard instructor's fee. Then, when I taught this course here at the ARC, I was actually able to charge less than the college did, but I actually made more money because I was cutting out the middleman. Plus, I didn't have to drive into the city four weeks in a row. But the feedback I got from my students that I wasn't charging enough for the course here at the ARC. They said that the information I shared would certainly save them thousands of dollars by saving them from not having to make the same mistakes that I made. One student told me that right off the top, she would save around $1,000 because now she didn't need to hire a consultant to come in and design her system. She said that she had received quotes between $800 and $2,500 for that service alone. So what if all this course did was help you purchase the right well pump the first time? That would save you at least $2,000 right there. What if all this course did was help you get your water heating system right the first time? Well, there's another $2,000 saved. What if all this course did was ensure you had the right size battery bank to suit your inverter and your solar panels and fulfill all of your energy needs? That will save you anywhere from $2,000 to $10,000. What if all this course does is show you ways to conserve so much energy that you don't even really need to go off the grid in the first place? That will not only save you the $40,000 upfront investment, but it will help you save money on your energy bill for the rest of your life. I know there are a lot of courses online right now that teach you how to make your own solar panels. In my course, I explain why that is a terrible idea and will give you access to how to get professionally manufactured solar panels for the same price as making them at home. That connection there will also save you a few thousand bucks. But what if all this course did was save you weeks and months of frustration trying to learn and fit every piece together piece by piece? Looking at it this way, this course has the potential to easily save you over $20,000 in mistakes and making the wrong purchases. Plus, it'll remove nearly all the stress and save you from a string of headaches. Looking back and knowing what I know now, I would have happily paid $5,000 for the information contained in this course. But the problem I thought of with offering this course online was that you wouldn't be here in person to ask any questions. The solution I came up with, uh, with is to create a private Facebook page. So anyone who takes this course will have access to that page and I'll monitor it and answer any questions. This is actually better than a live course because other mem members can also share their experiences, which may elicit multiple options for you to choose from. Another bonus to the online course over the live version is that you'll have lifetime access to it. So let's say you're just doing your research now, but you won't be starting the install for a couple of years. By the time you go to start making your purchases, you'll have completely forgotten everything. But all you need to do is go back, and watch the course again. Plus, in a couple of years, you'll still have access to me and you can ask me questions online through Facebook. Trust me, there's a lot of information in this course and after eight hours, your head will be spinning. By having access to it online, you can watch it in bite-sized pieces and re-watch any parts that you need to see again and again. So yeah, I have to agree with my students who say that I should charge at least $1,000 for this course. It's certainly worth it. But $1,000 is a lot of money and if I didn't know what I know now, I'd probably have a hard time putting down such a large chunk of change. I talked with my wife, Monique, about it, and she suggested I offer a 50% discount and only charge $500. She sat in on three of my classes now, and we both agreed that would be an awesome deal. But I'm new to this whole online world, and I don't know what online courses generally cost. We did a search for courses like this one and came up empty. There are courses, like I said, on how to build your own solar panels, and as I said, that is a terrible idea but there are no online courses out there for how to live off-grid. I did purchase, purchase a few of the online books that I found on just different aspects of living off-grid, and it was clear to me that the people who wrote those books didn't live off-grid themselves. One of the books was, was recommending purchasing an inverter that was three times the size that was warranted by the math that was presented. I have no idea how big a solar array and battery bank that guy would have recommended. So the bottom line was that we had no benchmark to work with. My course is the best course available, but it also appears to be the only course available. But then I had an idea. Why don't I let you guys decide how much you want to pay? Now, here's how I see this working. 
Right now, if you decide you want to take the course, I'll charge you $99. You'll then be charged $99 one month from now and another $99 two months from now. And then that's it. That's all. So you'll be charged a total of $297 or about 30% of what past students think the course is worth and $200 less than my wife thinks I should charge. And keep in mind, those students, they didn't have access to the Facebook page or did they have access to an online course that they can watch again and again and they can watch again, you know, months or years from now. But let's say you pay the $99, you watch the course and you decide, you know what, $99 is all this course is really worth. Then simply send me an email before that second month and the remaining two charges won't be billed. Or let's say you figure the course is worth more than $99, but it's not quite worth $297. Then send me an email after your second payment and your third payment won't be charged. But you know what? I understand that $99 is still a serious investment and I don't want you guys to worry at all. So I'm going to take all the risk here. On this page, you've got a written 30-day money-back guarantee. If for whatever reason you don't feel this course meets your expectations, I'll give you 100% of your money back. You don't even need to give me a reason. Just send me an, e an email saying, full refund, please. Luckily, it's been my experience that you off the grid folks, you're a pretty honest bunch, so I don't think you're going to take advantage of me. But here's the thing from my side. Like I said, I don't have any experience with online courses. So if I start getting feedback from the students saying I should take away the three payment offer, then that's what I'm going to do. Or if I start hearing that, yeah, my other students were right, and this is a $1,000 course, then I'll probably start raising the price as well. I want to make sure you guys get a fair deal and an awesome value, but I don't want to be a sucker because I charge too little either. So there you go. Nowhere online or offline are you going to get this much information about living off-grid. I know you can find some other manuals online, but like I say, from what I found from those, those are being sold by retailers who really don't understand how their equipment works in the real world. So if you really want to get the right stuff the first time and not go through all the headaches and frustrations I did, then you really want to take this course, all right? So just click on that access button. You'll get immediate access to it. And where else do you get to choose the price you pay for a course? Like I say, I'm charging $297. I think that's a completely fair price. But, you know, if you think $99 is better, you think $198 is better, or you know what, if you think, you know what, there is no value in this course whatsoever for me, then you get a money back guarantee. So nowhere else are you going to get a deal like that either. So click on the button right now because, like I said, I don't know when I might be increasing the prices. This is a really good course, and I think once people start seeing it, they're going to say, they're, I'm going to be getting that feedback. You know what, Mike, you really need to in, increase the cost of that course. So click on the button now, get access before the price goes up, and then as soon as you do that, make sure you sign up to the Facebook page, okay? Sign up to the page, introduce yourself, let me know who you are, what you want to do, and I will do everything I can to help you out and make sure you don't make any mistakes and you make your dream a reality. All right, look forward to meeting you. Talk to you then. Bye.